Okay. 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 So today I'm going to be assessing Hannah's right knee. Um, and with any assessment, uh, I'll like take a detailed uh, history from Hannah. So get all the symptoms from her, how, how long she's been feeling any discomfort there. And um, that will obviously uh, guide me in terms of the tests I select. But today, as we're doing a, a general overview, I'm going to go through um, and a variety of different tests to, to make sure I'm, I, I check every uh, possible scenario. So to start with, uh, I follow uh, the procedure of uh, having a look then feeling, then going into uh, movement patterns, followed by uh, any special tests, okay? So, having a look at Hannah's posture here, a uh, number of things I'm checking, starting with uh, symmetry between both sides. Is there more muscle bulk in one leg versus another? And I don't know if you can see on the camera here, but uh, there appears to be more muscle bulk in the right leg versus her left. Uh, this is some, something we see quite commonly in athletes that, uh, that kick, uh, that are left footed. So every time they kick in with their left foot, they plant their right leg and uh, over the seasons uh, they can build up more muscle bulk in their non-dominant limb. Um, also I'm checking for any scars, any bruising, any arrhythmia uh, when I'm assessing uh, or when I'm just having a look at the, the knees. Other things to check are the joints above and below the knee. So I'm looking at her ankles, um, what's happening at her feet, do we have flat feet, do we have high arches, uh, uh, how she's comfortable in standing, is there a weight shift to one side, uh, and then hips around here, what I commonly see, or and I'm referred uh, from the doctors within the clinic, is people with uh, anterior pelvic tilt, and the movement dysfunctions associated with that, such as knee valgus and overpronation, as well as overarching the, the lumbar spine. And um, that, that's, that's a sim symptom known as the, the lower cross syndrome. So um, I can see that Hannah's pretty good in that aspect. Uh, not not uh, much at all of an anterior pelvic tilt and no knee valgus or varus. So from that standing postural assessment, um, I often take tape measurements of the uh, muscle mass on each side and compare the two. Um, like I said, I suspect that that right leg uh, may have more muscle bulk than the left. So it's a good thing, especially when people are recovering from things like ACL surgery, um, to, keep, to have an idea of what their original muscle bulk is and, is, and then after you, you've, you've done your exercises with them, is there a change in that? Okay. So, Hannah, the next thing I'm going to ask you to do is, can you just walk up and down the room for me? And while she's walking, I'm looking at her gait, I'm looking for any compensations uh, compared to normal walking. Just one more time. Great. And just to clear for some neurological tests, can you walk on your heels on the way up? Very good. And then up onto your toes. Good. And that all looks fine. Okay, the next thing I go into is uh, looking at squatting and lunging patterns. Okay, so feet in a comfortable position, show, roughly shoulder width apart. Okay, I want your arms up over your head. Keep your arms extended. Okay, can you slowly squat down for me for three reps? So what I'm looking for here, and you can see that, I'm checking for are the knees coming in or are they staying in line over the toes? Is there a weight shift? So with Hannah, I don't know if you can see this in the film, but she's slightly weight shifting towards her left side. And she, uh, on the first rep, there was um, uh, quite notable knee valgus bilaterally. So these are all things I'm, I'm taking note of. Next thing, can you, uh, Hannah, can you lunge forward for me three times with your right leg, then three times with your left leg? Good. And again, I'm looking for those similar compensations. Is she, what's her core control like? Um, is she uh, favoring one side more than another? So I didn't instruct her to start with her right leg forward. She naturally stepped forward with her right leg, and that may, uh, that may be a telltale sign that she is more stable on the right leg. Okay, next thing I want you to do, we're going to look at some rotation. I want you to stand on one leg, touch the ground outside your foot, and reach across the body. So you're going to do this 
for three reps. So touch the ground outside your foot, reach across the body. So I'm making sure I'm covering all movement patterns, but she's, I'm not just looking at the sagittal plane, I'm looking at rotational and transverse aspects as well. Very good. And just we'll do just one rep on this side. Okay. And relax there. Very good. Now, I also have this gadget here. So this is a vertical jump mat, and what I get clients to do is step on, step onto the mat, and I can get them to jump, and this tells me the, the height that they jump on, uh, on each rep, okay? So again, if there is a, uh, you can compare the power between both legs, left and, and right, and obviously if there are any issues with one side, it will, it will show, show up on the screen as a reduced jump height, okay? So that's a, a neat little strength conditioning gadget that I like to incorporate into my sessions, okay? Now, okay. Next thing, Hannah, I'll, can I just get you to have a, a lie down onto the bed? And I'm just going to shift the camera. Okay. Make sure you're in. Okay. Now, so I'm assessing Hannah's right leg. I'm going to uh, palpate the joint um, starting with her patella. So I'm just going to have a look at it moving medially to laterally and superior to inferior. I'm going to palpate the patella tendon, the collateral ligaments. Okay, bring it into some knee flexion to palpate the joint lines. Good, that all feels fine. Excellent. And again, I'm continually comparing left to right leg and seeing that she have the same sensations on either side, um, comparing muscle bulk, comparing temperature um, throughout, throughout the exam. Okay, now we're gonna have a look at swelling in the knee. So for this, I, I do the sweep test. So from here, I'm gonna sweep up from the medial side and then sweep down from the lateral side and if there is swelling within the knee you see a glue like a sort of gloopy uh, substance come across uh, as you sweep down on the lateral side okay the other uh, sweat test I do for swelling is pulling down and then looking at the patella and if there is swelling in that area, again, you'll, you'll find um, fluid within this area after you've, you've, you've swept down from the quad area. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is have a look at her flexion and extension. Um, so Hannah, can you lift your right leg up as high as you can? Very good. And back down. And we'll compare that to the left. Good, and you can see with Hannah, there's a slight restriction towards uh, on her left straight leg raise. Uh, often people associate this straight away with uh, a tightness in the hamstrings, but there's actually a variety of different factors, including hip extension on that left side. So what I'd, I'd also do in terms of testing is perhaps a Thomas test or uh, a sideline quadricep stretch to check hip extension on, on that left side. Um, we could see in her single leg movement patterns earlier that she was uh, she had a bit of imbalance on that side and as mentioned before more muscle mass on her uh, right leg so a few things uh, building a bit of a picture here but we'll, we'll discuss that later um, next we're going to have a look at is her extension so can you push your, the, your knees into my hands good and I'm comparing both sides excellent very good okay and then I'll do that actively have a feel for both sides checking is there any hyperextension and then I'll check flexion on both sides good both in a straight leg raise Excellent. okay and then can you just bring both your heels up towards your backside as close as you can good and does that feel any different from left to right no. 
Okay, great. Okay, legs straight, please. Thank you very much. Now we're just going to do some strength tests. So I'm comparing left to right. We're going to test calves here. Can you push down towards my hand on both sides at the same time? Very good. And relax. Excellent. Check quadriceps. Can you push your uh, heel in towards my hand? Good. And relax. And hamstrings. Can you push down towards my hand? And relax. Very good. Okay. Excellent. Now we're going to go on to some special tests. So I'm going to start here with looking at her uh, co uh, collateral ligaments. So starting with MCL, or oh, yeah, MCL here. So I'm just going to try and stabilize the tibia, and I'm just applying a medial force. Bit of flexion in towards the knee. Good, and then LCL. And just checking if there's any discomfort there. Any pain or discomfort? Feels fine? Yeah. Great. Okay. Then I'm going to look at her PCL. So I'm going to do the posterior draw test. Stabilizing and then checking for that end feeling. Good. And that feels fine. And then ACL with the anterior draw test. How does that feel? Good, and there's a nice end feel there as well. With this, as uh, other tests you can do are the Lachman's test to, to check on the ACL, but um, I've had both my ACLs done and uh, these tests both came out negative, but mainly due to when post ACL injury, the hamstring obviously contracts a lot to to do some of the job of the non-existent ACL. So some of these, um, although when you find the negative on MRI, can, can show that there is a, an ACL tear. So I'm just trying to stabilize there and seeing if I can feel excessive mobility with this movement, and that feels fine. Okay, next thing I'm gonna look at is her um, meniscus. So. Uh, from here, I'm going to do her, uh, we've already, uh, in standing, uh, I'd get her to do her duck walk, okay, which is in a squat position, staying down nice and low and squatting down as she walks. People with meniscal injuries um, often uh, mention that they have discomfort within that movement. Uh, but here I'm going to do the McMurray's, so I'm going to turn the, turn the foot, bring it up towards her. Any discomfort there? Good. And then within this position, just doing a figure of eight. How's that? Good. And then checking the lateral. Any discomfort there? Okay. And then figure of eight. Nothing there? Excellent. The final test for the meniscus, if you can turn onto your front, we're just going to do the McMurray's. Okay, bringing this foot up, stabilizing the tibia, okay, just applying compression down towards the knee and from here into a twisting movement. Any pain on that, Hannah? No. Excellent. If there are pain, if she's uh, saying she has any pain or discomfort with any of these tests, um, I'd refer within my clinic to uh, a doctor who can order the, the necessary imaging so we can find out what's going on and proceed from that. Okay, that concludes my knee assessment.